Hi, I'm Mark Rothenberg, and I'm very pleased to share with you what's going on in the research laboratory. As you know, my lab is working on the molecular, cellular, and genetic elements that cause eosinophilic GI disease, aiming to find a better understanding, but also to develop better treatment and cure for these diseases. I'd like to share with you some of the, the approaches that we're taking in my laboratory, which includes fundamental studies, which are basic science oriented, also genetic components, which uncover the genetic basis of the disease, and also systems that we've built in the area of translational medicine, where we can model human disease, both in vitro, in ex vivo, and also in live animals. This allows us to test theories that we may find through genetic leads, test them in the lab on the bench through experiments to find out if they're functional, and then to go into our experimental systems to see if they make sense related to the patients. And finally, if they do feed each other and reinforce our theories, then we go into patients and do studies. And indeed, we are working hard in at regularly improving health of people through our research discoveries thanks to the partnership with so many people. Specifically, what we've learned over the last couple of years is illustrated in this slide. When focusing on the esophagus, a very strong um, area of, of interest of my laboratory, we now know that foods trigger changes in the esophageal epithelium, which are the skin cells in the esophagus. This elicits particular changes in the immune system, which we've defined both at a cellular and molecular level. And we know that these early events include cytokines such as IL-33 and TSLP, which trigger two cells that we think are orchestrating the reaction, which is the Th2 cell and the T regulatory cell. And these cells orchestrate and um, a set of responses that trigger mast cells and eosinophils, which are allergic inflammatory cells, to get activated in the tissue. We've defined intermediary sickling molecules and then the particular events that take place that cause eosinophilic inflammation, the loss of the barrier, which we think is fundamental in a disease, and also tissue remodeling, which is the scarring process that we are working hard to resolve through reversible uh, treatments. What I want to tell you about, which is extremely exciting to the field, is that we now have drugs that interfere with these pathways. After years of work, we now have drug that blocks this molecule, IL-5. These are drugs now that are available um, for the treatment of patients approved by the FDA. I'm very excited to also know that molecules that that re regulate IL-4 and IL-13 are now approved also for clinical usage by the FDA. Not yet for eosinophil GI diseases, but for allergic problems and particularly eosinophil variants of asthma. We are working on other drugs actively to see how we can improve the patients through the pathway we've described. And now we're excited to say that we have drugs that eliminate eosinophils. A recent drug was approved by the FDA that removes the eosinophils from the body by uh, being a cytotoxic drug. It's not a chemotherapeutic, it's actually a safe drug that specifically eliminates the eosinophil. So these are excitements here in the Rothenberg lab, and it's what we're aiming to do, which is to apply this knowledge to the betterment of patients and do that as rapidly as possible because too many people continue to have eosinophilic disorders, particularly of the GI tract like eosinophilic esophagitis. So I do want to say at this time of the year that uh, funding for research is limited and uh, it is rate determining in terms of what we can do. I ask you to think deep about possibly contributing to our research. Of course, funds are helpful at any level, but also through uh, other ways in which you can partner with us. Thank you very much for considering that, and it's been a pleasure to share with you what the research operation is doing.